Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with another autocross car build. My vehicle today is the Holden Torana. People wanted to see me have a go with building this as an autocross car. I'm kind of curious to see how this thing will will fare. It's a little different to the cars that have tended to go fast around here. Tiny, lightweight roadsters have been uh, very quick for autocross, as you might imagine. But I'm curious, this thing might not be too bad when it comes to autocross. We've certainly got plenty of room to play around with for the parts, as these cars are going to be built to A-class, and this starts off just at the top of E-class. So, Plenty of room for upgrades. Race tyres, first thing of course, that is going to go on the vehicle. I mean, the reason why I think that this could be quite good is we're going to have good torque figures, good power figures. And as you can see, it's not actually that heavy. It might be a little bit larger than some of the vehicles that we have had, but it's not particularly heavy. And I'm hoping, yes we can, <laughs> we can get some massive great big tyres on this thing. Three, three, fives. I think they might be the biggest tyres that we have had on a car for this series. 255s on the front. Uh, we are up into C-Class now already with uh, just just the tyres. We shall stick uh, these parts on. Ah, right, okay. I was wondering what that was. It's just, a, it's just a removal thing. So we will have the aero parts on the vehicle. If we're going to... There we go. You are going to allow me to do that. Thank you, game. We will put... Uh, Wow, that drops the PI by a lot. And this kind of useful to me almost when building a car. I mean, the, the downside of having aero parts is going to reduce the vehicle's top speed. It also adds a tiny bit of weight, but it's the main the main thing. It reduces the top speed. Well, that's irrelevant for what we're doing. We're taking around an autocross course. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Oh, one thing I will look at just briefly. What engines are available for this? Uh, twin turbo i6, the, the, the common v 8 the uh, the Nissan V6 and the NASCAR V8. Lots of choices then for engines <laughs> in this one. That's that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent amount of amount of options. We're going to stick with the standard engine though for this one. We may come back. We may well put a supercharger uh, in the vehicle. We'll see once it's all fully handling built. Then we'll see how much PI we have to uh, to work with. Get brakes in, get the suspension. I'm hoping we may even see this car under under two thousand pounds. Possibly, I might be asking a little bit too much of it actually. But uh, I mean, this car starts off. This is about the weight the NSX finished up at. I think the NSX was about two thousand five hundred, two thousand four hundred pounds. So this starts off pretty damn light. Uh, come on, roll cage. There we go. Get you installed. Right. How much weight are we going to get out of the car? It's only 300. Admittedly, when we stick exhaust on, that'll take it down a little bit more, though if we do go for a supercharger, that'll increase the weight again and so on. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to uh, <laughs> to do that one. No, game, come back, stop saving content. I'm not finished with the car yet. God damn it. Uh, it's on a, I don't know what's been going on with my Xbox. It's been a bit, a bit dodgy when it's come to upgrading cars. It's been really sluggish. Jesus, that's a fair amount of PI jump uh, on the car. Yeah, okay, that, that exhaust was 100 pounds almost. <laughs> Bloody hell, no wonder it's a big PI jump. Very heavy exhaust on this car from standard. Right, we are probably going to want a supercharger because uh, we actually got to try and get it to the uh, to the top of A class. We will go for that. That's going to add on the, the weight back on. But never mind. We will uh, we will deal with all of that. Okay, and now I think it should be a case of stick on power parts really to this uh, to this engine. I'm hoping the standard engine is going to get enough power. I would have expected it to. Um, yeah, I mean, A-Class is not exactly, especially with a full handling build, A-Class is not exactly like a ridiculous uh, class to build a vehicle to. By the looks of it, we are going to need most of the parts here. Oh, there we go, okay. Right, camshafts are going to jump us up a fair amount, and then it will just be kind of a, it's a balancing act now of trying to fill out the, uh, the remaining PI. What I will do is quickly go back here, because I do want to get a clutch and a in the drive line and differential as well while we're here this is looking pretty promising on the whole performance front massive tires we've got massive massive tires um decent horsepower not particularly heavy good torque as well yeah well, this is controllable and i'm hoping it will be the, certainly the standard car was good fun to drive when we weren't racing with them I reckon, I reckon this holder, we go 513 foot-pounds of torque. That is an awful lot of torque for an A-class handling built car. I I reckon this Holden could be 
really, really quite fast. Here is hoping that uh, that it is. So here we are at the Hockenheim circuit, ready for my three attempts at getting the Hold'em around this course. Our current leader and target time is the Datsun 2000 with a lap of 2 minutes 6.8. That is what we are going to be going for. I'm not sure the Holden is going to be quite fast enough for that. If I can get anything under the 2 minutes 8, I think it'll be doing pretty well for uh, for this car. That Datsun was absolutely ridiculous. I think the problem we're probably going to have with the Holden is it's not going to change direction quite as neatly as the 2000 did. We should have plenty of power though, plenty of torque. Acceleration should be very, very good. I'm not sure about the change in the direction. Also, the fear as ever with powerful rear-wheel drive muscle cars is um, we might have some we might have some oversteer that you really don't particularly want to be dealing with when it comes to autocross, but it seems pretty good. I mean, we can spin the wheels up without any problem coming out of these early gates, but we haven't got the back end wiggling around doing its own thing. Uh, we have... I've just clipped the gate a little too much on the way in there. That's uh, That was silly of me. We have got a bit more understeer than I was, oh god, expecting from this car. It's... yeah, it doesn't actually like that fast section very much at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Slightly peculiar. At high speeds, it doesn't really have that much turn, and then at lower speeds, we're back to being... Oh, okay, that was pushing my luck a little bit. Yeah, can we be flat out through here? That is the question. I did have to have a little lift, because I wasn't quite trusting the car the way I was lining it up. And I think we probably can just about be flat through that, that high-speed section. There is some understeer, though, kinging from the Holden through these, through these gates, and then we get on the power. And then it's all very well and nicely behaved. And then stop for that one there, just about. Brakes, not quite as good as some of the cars we have seen. That's perhaps not too surprising. It is, uh, well, was it 300 pounds heavier than the Datsun? It's quite a lot heavier than the likes of the BAC Mono. So, yeah, it's perhaps not too surprising that the brakes aren't the most amazing thing in the world. That back end really wanted to let go through that section. Oh, Christ, there goes the understeer again. And I can't really chuck it in with the same confidence through there. Not in the way that you could with the Datsun. You could really throw the Datsun in towards the tunnel there. And this... No, no, you, you can't quite do it. Uh, mainly because of the understeer. There's a lot of understeer. <laughs> that is not quite the issue that I expected to have with this car. I didn't expect it to quite change direction as well as the Datsun, no, because the Datsun was very, very good, was very agile with that kind of thing. But um, I didn't quite expect this. It's just got this uh, a mile of understeer going on when we go through ooh, some of these gates. Please get stopped. Please get stopped. I've been kind of spoiled by the Datsun when I uh, <laughs> drove that one last time. We can get it flat out through that final section. I think we were. I think we hit three gates on that one, which is about 15 seconds worth of time penalties. The Holden is pretty good, just got to deal with that understeer a bit better. Right, on to the second attempt. Yeah, it's really dealing with the understeer. Perhaps the, the size difference between the front and the rear tyres could contribute a little bit to, uh, to this as to why we do have quite a lot of understeer at, uh, at lower speeds, because it is a massive difference between the, uh, the two sets of tyres. I mean, it's not... I prefer this as a as a handling for a car to drive because it's easier for me to deal with a car. I can I can deal with with the understeer a bit better. Just a bit of a surprise. That's all with a with a rear wheel drive Holden is not what I was expecting this car to uh, particularly drive like. I think combine the understeer with it's not quite as sharp under braking as, as some of the other cars may cause it a little bit of problem. But but we do have that phenomenal acceleration in between the gates, which is always nice. It's always nice to have uh, have the power to uh, get out of trouble in between the gates. You know, make the most of the, the strengths of this car. Right, can we be flat? I still dead quite. I still don't quite trust it. it is, we're talking about 116-ish miles an hour down there, which is pretty good going for, well, for anything on an autocross course. 116 miles an hour is, uh, is pretty damn good. We will deal with this section here pretty well. It's pretty neat through here. It's just really high-speed stuff it doesn't like, and the lower-speed stuff can be a little bit of a fiddle. I'm getting a surprising amount of wheel spin, actually, in, in second gear. Second gear seems to be working pretty well for this car, despite the huge tyres we have on it still wants to slide around. It's not quite as bad as the RX-7. It's a little bit more predictable than the RX-7, I think, is why I, I prefer this. 
the Mazda was a bit of a pain because you never quite knew when the back end was going to want to let go. This, the back end only lets go when you're being a moron with the throttle or when you get a big twitch coming into the tunnel arse. Uh, just the worst place to have a problem is uh, coming into there when you're already committed to going flat out into that corner and it just wiggles around a little bit, that's when you know you've had it. That's a irritation, uh, I'll say that much. It was going pretty well up until that point. Yeah, I don't know what actually upset the car there. It was just like, nope, nope, I am having a bad day. Uh, <laughs> which is a shame, but I've pissed it up further around the lap. Um, hmm, curious. Yeah, I I like it. It's just got to gotta cut out the little mistakes. Yeah, it's sloppy. Sloppy right. Admittedly, I, hit, I think I hit one more gate and was almost exactly the same time. So there is definitely speed to be found in this car. Just need to not make any silly mistakes. On to our final run with the Holden. If you could not get unhappy coming into the tunnel section, that would be awesome. Okay, if we can, if we can do that, I would be, uh, I would be very, very happy with you, car. Uh, this is another vehicle I reckon would make a pretty damn good, a pretty damn good choice of car for just general A-class racing. It seems like uh, it's got enough grip through the corners, and we've got good acceleration. It'd be a good kind of overall car. This one, the likes of the, the NSX. The NSX is a phenomenal vehicle to drive. It's absolutely amazing to drive, but it was lacking power, whereas something like this, we've got plenty of power, plenty of torques, acceleration, straight line speed and stuff would be would be good for the slightly longer circuits, and perhaps with this tighter a, tighter a track, we do have a little bit of problems with understeer, and that is a surprising amount of wheel spin, actually, from this, uh, from this car, considering the Datsun had smaller tyres and wasn't that far off in terms of power, admittedly this has got more torque, quite a lot more torque actually, but um, the, you know, the Datsun was actually pretty pretty stable for, for what it was. Uh, this can just get those uh, those rear wheels spinning up uh, a little bit more. Uh, you might, you're perhaps not too surprised by this car wanting to slide around, but I am surprised how, I guess it's kind of how well the Datsun did in comparison to the other vehicles really. Uh, right, we have so far done pretty well with uh, all of this run. Now we're coming up to the really the really narrow RC gate. Actually, a little bit, little bit wonky on the way in. I think I've just about managed to recover it. Now, <laughs> this section car, don't do what you did last time. A little bit of a short shift actually worked through there to uh, stop the rear end from uh, from letting go on me. Right, we got it. I think we might have got it on the bumps, and it just tipped the car sideways, and I had to counter steer for a second to catch it from spinning, and that's what put me in the barrels. That time around, though, was much better. Okay, get through these gates. Uh, we are doing better on this particular run. Watch out for the understeer on the way up through here. And then we've got a few more gates to go with the Holden. Things are looking pretty good for this car. Get it slowed down. I mean, we're, the issue we're going to have is it's just not quite as quick. Change of direction through here as we got from the Dats. And we can boot it there. We will get some wheel spin as we run towards the line. The 2 minutes 8.2 is a pretty damn respectable time from the Holden there. Um, yeah, I like I like it. I, as I said, I think this would make for a great a great A-class car for normal circuit racing. Building cars for autocross is such a specialised thing. I mean, you never normally come across. Uh, yes, I do like the livery. It's awesome livery. Um, you never normally come across tracks this tight. In, in normal racing, even the most handling orientated circuits you find on Forza never got the same demands as you would come across in an autocross course. And this does pretty well. It's the the high speed understeer uh, through a couple of the, the faster gates. I just can't carry the speed through some of the sections that you could with some of the other vehicles. However, overall, I reckon this is a pretty damn good, pretty damn good A-class car. It's time puts it in to ninth spot. It displaces the NSX. It is a fraction behind the Ford Mustang. I mean, the top of this table here is all very, very close. It is a very, very close table between all of all of these vehicles. So that's, yeah, that that's decent a decent time from the Holden. It's just let down by the front end, not quite wanting to get turned in as well as we have seen from uh, some of the some of the other vehicles. But yeah, that's you know, getting the two oh eights is still is still pretty damn good. It's around the Mustang. You know, that Mustang is a good car. Mustang's a very good car for this sort of thing. So uh yeah. I would uh, I like the Holden. I, I really do. It's uh, not quite got the agility of the Datsun, but still a, a, a good overall vehicle. Anyway, that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching. 
And until next time, uh, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.